Welcome back to cooking with Mrs C but today it's going to be a bit different because we're going to be cooking with Mr C and I'm going to teach him how to make his favourite cake which is a lemon drizzle cake. Morning Mr C. Good morning. Would you like to tell us what's in your bowl please? Yes, 225 grams 9 ounces of caster sugar, 225 grams of baking margarine. Okay and what process are you going to use today? Uh, the creamy method of blending it all together, which is probably about the second time in my life that I've done it. So, okay. fingers crossed. Alright, so how are you going to do that? Which part of the spoon are you going to use? The head? <laughs> yeah, or maybe called the back. The back of the spoon, okay? Off you back go. back of the spoon. It's quite tough to get it going. Once the margarine softens up, I imagine it will go together a little bit more easily. And why have you chosen to use that method? Um, because that is the correct method and that's the one I was told to use. And what else does it add when you're creaming? What are the magic ingredient? Honestly, I don't know. So think about it, it's all science. And when you're creaming it, you're incorporating something else into that mixture. Oh, air maybe? Excellent. Right. Very good. So remember, you said you're going to use the back of the spoon. Yeah, trying to use the back <laughs> of the spoon. It's harder than it looks. Although I think I'm managing to make it look quite hard, actually. Hopefully there'll be a, a montage and we'll jump to another picture where it's all been ready done. Oh, that's looking good, Mr. C. Yeah, it's all right, isn't it? Yeah, nice and fluffy. Yeah, it got going quite quickly, actually, once I sort of lent into it a bit, but it's quite hard work. Okay, have you, work no have you noticed any other changes with that mixture? Yeah, it's gone quite pale. Oh, and why do you think that is, then? Um, oh. <laughs> I would imagine just the, the whiteness of the sugar has, has taken the colour down from the margarine, but I'm guessing that's wrong, is it? No, that, that's oh, okay. almost there, but think about the method. You said that you'd got something else in there. Oh, air. Air. The, the air. Ah, okay. So air has made it gone paler. Okay, okay got it. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Good. So what's next? I'm going to crack the eggs one at a time, um, mixing each one in thoroughly before I then go and do the next one. Okay, that, that sounds quite a good idea. What might happen if you crack that egg straight into that bowl? Um, bits of shell could get down into the mixture and make it taste horrible. Yeah. And also, if that egg happened to be not very fresh, which it isn't, you'd waste all that mixture. So where would it be, be best to put the egg? Maybe into a little jug? Into a jug. Well done. Mix it with a fork. Here it goes. Squelching those. Next egg. What number egg is that, sir? Second egg. Second of four. Egg number three. Now 
now, Mr C, is there anything that you can think about where perhaps you could work a bit more hygienically? Um, I could throw the eggshells away. That's a really good I idea go. as you go. Why? Why do we have to be careful with raw egg? I don't know. Perhaps you could explain that on Mrs Cameron. Well, there's a certain bacteria that sometimes lives in eggs that we don't want to contaminate other surfaces and foods with. Uh -huh. Begins with a s. Salmonella. Good. Gotcha. Some of us might be old enough to remember the salmonella um, outbreak in the 80s. Right. So where should I put the eggshells ideally then? Should I have a a bin open or a, a separate bowl or something that we go into? Yeah, maybe a separate bowl next time. Um, but with eggshells, you can put them in a bin that most houses have in Peterborough. That would be a good place to put it after we've done this little bit, which would be which bin? Uh, the Hungry Harry. Yeah, brilliant. So the four eggs are in and now the flour, which I've already weighed out, 225 grams of self-raising flour, nine ounces, if you've got old-fashioned scales like us. So I'm putting it into the sieve, and it's going to get sieved through, I suppose, also to get some air into the mixture oh. again, and in case there are any lumps. Very good. I think I remember that from cookery at school, which is a very long time ago. I wasn't very good at it at school. I think I probably used to get moaned at a bit for getting it wrong. So I'm folding this mixture together now to keep the air in it. Oh, very good. Because if, um, if you beat it in too aggressively with your spoon or your whisk or whatever you're using, you'll push all that air out and what you'll get is you'll get a, a thick, claggy mixture that won't rise nicely and the cake itself just won't be nice to eat. And why did you use self-raising flour? Not plain flour or strong plain flour? The self-raising flour has a raising agent already in it that I think is baking powder. Yeah, very good. And how does that work? Do you know? I'm going to guess that on heating it releases gas. Good. What gas? Um, carbon dioxide, I would guess. Excellent. And what kind of reaction would that be if it releases a gas? Hmm. I'm not sure I know. Give me a clue. What's the first letter? Curly cu. Cu. Curly cu. Can I have another letter, please? H. H. Kesh. Now you'd think a ch sound, but actually in this word, the cu and the h make a k sound. Oh, is it one of the, the three science words? Yep. I'm going to say it's a chemical reaction then. Excellent. That looks a really nice mixture, Mr C. So what are you doing now? Um, I've got one large lemon and I'm going to zest it. I mean, basically, I'm going to take the sort of tangy tasting, very lemony skin just off the outside of the orange with... In the orange now? <laughs> the lemon. Oh, my OK, God. yeah. Ah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, yeah into the, the smaller teeth on the, on the sieve. On the sieve. Oh, the sieve. <laughs> wow, I'm having a good day. What do you have to be careful about when you're grating, sir? Not grating your fingers. <laughs> yeah, we don't want that. No, we don't want that. One large lemon zested and into the mixture it goes. Fold this in again. Remember, you don't want to go beating it because you will just push out all of that air that you've folded into the mixture so carefully with all your work before. Make sure it's nice and evenly through. And that means that every time you bite into a bit of the cake, you'll have that nice lemon flavour. Um, that's all done. I'm now going to put it into a pre-lined baking tin and it's going to go into the oven which was set at 
180 degrees if you've got a fan oven. So the mixture's all in. Now with my spatula, I'm going to spread it out evenly inside the loaf tin. Which as you can see I've lined with greaseproof paper. And get it nice and smooth. Perhaps not up the side of maybe the grease proof. Maybe not up the sides, sides of the grease proof. No, maybe not that. Because that might do what in the oven? Burn. Yeah. Well done. Don't want to lose any. Is that okay? You happy with that? Yeah, pretty happy, yeah. Okay. <laughs> we'll okay. <laughs> Made a cake. Put it in the oven. Okay. Done. See, See you in. back later. So then, Mr. C, what's next? Well, that's in the oven. Um, making the drizzle. So it says the juice of one and a half lemons and 85 grams or three ounces of caster sugar. So I'm going to make my bridge and I'm going to get my sharp knife and carefully cut through the middle of the orange that I zested earlier on. Orange. Lemon. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. <clears throat> and I'm going to use our lemon squeezer to squeeze the lemon, not an orange. Why do I keep saying orange? Maybe we need to work on your colours. Maybe, maybe. Take that pip out there. I'm going to tip this into the jug that's already got three ounces or 85 grams of caster sugar in it. Make sure you get the pips out, obviously. As you can see, we've had a bit of a tidy up. It's important to keep your work area clean and organised, just like it is in DT, of course. So this will be for the other half. We'll put this half of the lemon aside for something else later on, probably. Any tools you don't need, put them away put them somewhere safely where they're not going to get involved in what you're doing or knocked and <clears throat> fall off the workbench or the worktop and become a hazard or hurt somebody including yourself and what's that lemon juice going to do when it's mixed with the sugar what will happen to the sugar a bit more science I think um, it will become a solution yeah because the sugar will do what in the lemon juice? Begins with a D. Dissolve. Excellent. I'm thinking too hard there. So what's next? Um, we're coming near to the end of the baking time. So I'm going to check to see if it's ready by putting this skewer into the middle of the cake. If it comes out clean, it's ready to come out. If it comes out with any cake mixture on it, it needs to stay in for a few more minutes. see it needs to stay in for a few more minutes. Poking holes in the top of the cake so that the drizzle mixture soaks in and is delicious. There we are. Give the drizzle mixture another mix up. Is soaking into the holes. Mm -mm. That looks good. Here we go. Drizzle cake. 
Done. Well done, Mr C. Thank you.